Okay, hi everyone. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go over what we went through Friday, and I'm gonna give you some extra practice just so I can make sure that you understand everything. So I'm gonna go through one of the worksheets that are very similar to the ones we went over Friday. They're gonna be different examples, but I just wanna make sure everybody understands how to do it. So this one is identifying primary and secondary sources. So again, let's look at the definition. A primary source is information that was created at the same time as an event or by a person directly involved in the event. So I'm gonna highlight that definition so that we remember it. And they give us some examples. Diaries, speeches, letters, official records, and autobiographies. So let's try secondary source. It's information from somewhere else or by a person not directly involved in an event. So I'm gonna highlight that. And they also give us some examples. So encyclopedias, textbooks, book reports, all of those things are secondary. Okay, so let's look at an example. Number one, a journal written by Lewis about his exploration of the Louisiana Purchase. Okay, so we know that a journal written by that person, if we look right here in this definition, it tells you it has to be created at the same time or by a person directly involved. What well, we can see in number one, a journal entry or journal was written by Lewis about his exploration of the Louisiana Purchase. So they're talking about Lewis and Clark, and they're saying that this journal was written by Lewis himself about his exploration. So we know that one is primary because it's coming directly from that person. So let's try number two. A history book describing Lewis and Clark's exploration of the Louisiana Purchase. Okay, so now here we're getting something different. It's a history book describing Lewis and Clark or their exploration. So if it's a history book, that's similar to a textbook. So we know that that's going to be secondary because it's not coming directly from the person and it's not coming directly from that time. It's someone looking at something and then writing a book about it afterwards. Let's try number three. A classmate giving a report about World War II. Okay, if the classmate is giving a report, that goes right up there with book reports. So we know that's a secondary source. Okay, let's try number four. A letter from a soldier describing World War II. Okay, so this isn't a report, this is a letter from a person who was actually involved, was actually there at the time. So that's going to be primary. Maybe up a little bit. Okay, let's try number five. A Vietnam veteran talking about the war in Vietnam. Okay, so this is a person who was there at the time of the event, the war, and they're talking about it themselves. So we know that is primary because it's coming from the person and from the time. Number six, a TV show explaining what happened in Vietnam. Okay, so it's a TV show, meaning they're explaining things after the fact, after something has happened. So that's secondary. Let's try number seven, a biography about Abraham Lincoln. Okay, so biography means that it was written about someone. So if it's a biography about Abraham Lincoln, that means that somebody else wrote it about him. So that makes it secondary because it's not coming from him. Somebody else wrote it about him.
Okay, let's try number A. Abraham Lincoln's diary describing what he thought about the Civil War. Okay, so it's his own diary. And if we look at our definition, one of the examples of a primary source is a diary. So we know that because it came from him and he wrote it himself, that makes it primary. Let's try number nine. An actor describing what it was like on the set of a movie. Okay, so this is coming directly from the person who was at on the side of the movie and they're describing it. So that is primary because it's coming from that person, the person involved. Let's try number 10. A journal article written about how Native Americans live. Okay. So it's a journal article. Normally when we hear article, it means that somebody else has researched information and they're writing about it now. So if somebody else is researching about Native Americans and they write this, then that makes it secondary because it's not coming directly from somebody who is there. It's somebody who's writing after the fact. Okay, let's try number 11. A website describing what the first World's Fair was like. Okay, so this is a website. It's not directly, it's not a person directly coming from the World's Fair. It's not an, an eyewitness account. It's a website describing it. So we know that is secondary. Let's try number 12. Okay. A newspaper article from 1941 describing the attack on Pearl Harbor. Okay, so we know this is coming from 1941, which means that's the time of Pearl Harbor, and it's a newspaper article describing it. So because it's coming from that time, it's going to be primary. Let's try number 13. Not many more to go. Okay. 13 says an autobiography about Bill Clinton. So if it's an autobiography, that means that they wrote it themselves. So if it was written by him and it's about him, then it is primary. Okay, let's try 14. A friend describing the snowstorm he was in last year. So a friend is describing their own, the snowstorm that they were in. So because they were a part of it, they were involved, it is primary. And don't worry, we only have one more. The Declaration of Independence. Well, the Declaration of Independence is a document. And because it is a famous document, or it's an official record, it's a primary source. So you've just finished this entire worksheet of examples. Now what I want you to do is go to Canvas and there will be a primary versus secondary sources activity for you to work on. And I can show you what that looks like. So if you look for primary versus secondary sources, you're going to click on it and it'll bring this up for you. Just like your interest survey, you can just copy this and when you hit submit assignment, then you can paste it and type your answers or you can make a file and upload it, whichever one's easier for you. So this is all you're going to do is you're going to go look here and you're going to give me a definition of a primary source. So you can use the worksheet that I gave you Friday to help you find the definitions for these, or you can think about it and you can come up with your own definition as long as it makes sense. And then I want you to give two examples of each. So you're going to give me two examples of primary source and two examples of a secondary source. Then just like we just did, you're going to scroll down here to the bottom 
you're gonna look at these examples. You know, here's an example for you. You're gonna look at number one. Faith leaves a letter she wrote to her best friend on the table. What is her letter? You're gonna tell me whether that's primary or secondary and tell me how you know. Tell me why you think it is primary or why you think it's secondary. And that's all you're gonna do for this part, those, that one through 10. Then I want you to come back four, where it says you will be completing a quiz called primary versus secondary sources quiz and quizzes. So you have to be in the quizzes class for your home base. And if you see right here, it says if you're not in the quizzes class for your home base, you need to be. And it tells you where to go to find that information. You're gonna to go to important links in the announcements from last week if you are not already in there, but you should already be in there. And that's what I want you to work on for today. If you have any questions, send me an email, let me know, and I'll probably email you back within a couple of minutes. Okay, guys, that should be it. Let me know if you have any questions, and I will see you tomorrow. Bye-bye.